and Bob Richards was enjoying the nice weekend indoors. There were a uh, few uh, new movies in theaters. A an few average new number, movies, right? Yeah, kind of an average number. I wish it was outside a little more this weekend. Yeah, it was pretty nice out there. <laughs> Air conditioned, I'm sure, in the theater, though, right? A little right? bit of pain, a <laughs> little bit of gain. Hey, uh, that was I the name of it. a movie. Number one movie this week, Pain Again. It showed its box office muscle, smacking down De Niro and Cruise for Champ of the Chart. It pulled in 20 million in its first week of release, while Tom Cruise's Oblivion slipped to second with 17.4 million. 42 was third, and despite all its star power, the big wedding wasn't so big, with just 7.5 million for fourth place. Combine Matthew McConaughey's best performance ever with a wonderful Huck Finn-like coming-of-age tale set in the muddy South and two young actors whose earnest, endearing performances are completely believable with a script that is superlative in every way, and you've got mud now playing at the flicks. It's a wonderfully enjoyable story that I absolutely fell in love with. Gorgeous Reese Witherspoon is given little to do along with Michael Shannon, but they don't clutter things up either. Mud is no dud. Four and a half stars out of five. The tone of pain and gain is a lot of fun. Actually, it's hilarious for the first three quarters of the film. Mark Wahlberg and Dwayne Johnson are really great together. Then it turns into a black comedy for a while before the film reminds us it's a true story. When the killing begins and we completely lose the sense of fun, reality sets in and the film emphasizes the pain more than the gain. Unfortunately, that's what the audience feels as well. Three and a half stars out of five. Robert Redford's The Company You Keep, also now at the flicks, is supposed to be a political thriller. Number one, those two words, political and thriller, don't belong together. Next, terrible pacing and overwrought performances let all the air out of the thriller part. Like a tire with a hole in it, this goes flat and drags on and on. Flump, flump, flump. The twists reveal themselves way too soon or just keeps driving on the rims. Flump, flump. Lump. Two and a half stars out of five. The Big Wedding features a ton of stars and takes every oh-so-wacky thing that's ever been in a wedding movie, tosses them all in a box, shakes it up, and throws it on the audience. To illustrate, let's call this the big recipe. Start with a big scoop of vanilla ice cream. Add chocolate sauce. Good, right? How about if we add some sprinkles, whipped cream, nuts, Reese's Pieces, cookie dough, and caramel? Still okay? Well, that's it. let's add some peanut butter. That's good, right? Butterscotch pudding? Add a bowl full. Do you like soy sauce? Pour it on. How about onions? Delicious. Four scoops. Meatballs? Add about a pound. Nacho cheese sauce and pretzels? Mix it in. Sugar? About a pound. Salami? Add 20 slices. With all these good things, putting them all together must be great, right? No. It'll make you vomit, just like Katherine Heigl did all over Robert De Niro, probably after she saw this film. Two stars out of five. For my reviews, a look at this week's DVD and Blu-ray releases and more, head over to my website, BobRichardsMovieReviews.com, or link to it at IdahoOnYourSide.com. I'm not surprised about The Big Wedding. It seems like every time they have a movie with a huge list of cast, of big-time actors, doesn't usually do so well. They have to pay all those actors so much they don't have any money to hire a good script writer. And then you end up with salami sundaes. Like <laughs> you're saying, <laughs> yeah. I have a bad taste in my mouth now just thinking about that. Thanks, Bob. <laughs>